Hey, what's up, YouTube? Grath here. So I've been asked a ton of questions over the last couple of days about how I'm making my currency MFing and what I'm doing exactly. I figured I'd just make a quick video and talk about my current strategy and what I'm looking for and how it works exactly. This isn't going to be about my character, though I am using my Coscara Pathfinder. I'm just, I just threw on two Venters, threw on Divination to sell it, and some Gold Worms. I don't really have that much MF gear. I have about 70 quantity with my divination up. So I'll quickly mention how that's working. Um, make sure you have the life flask mastery so you can always use your divination. And make sure you have the master surgeon node. The second so divination will just always stay up even at full life. So that's the important part about my character. And of course I'm using item rarity. Once I got my character, I'll post the PUB in the link in the description below. This video is not about that though. This video is about my current MF strategy. So let's get into that. So currently I am going Abyss, mostly, with Unique Scarabs. So why do we care about Abyss? I'm going to quickly explain some mechanics about Abyss so you guys can understand exactly why it's so strong. I have been doing this for two days. I found a Mageblood, a Squire, found pretty much every T1 unique in the game. I have every single jewel, basically. I found the four Storm Shrouds, for example. So what am I doing? Let's talk about how Abyss works first, actually. So when you run over an abyss, it spawns cracks in the ground. Now this stops at various points and spawns monsters. And at the very end of the abyss, it can either spawn a trove, a spire, or a boss. Now the core of the strategy is based off of that mechanic. So when we use Gilded plus Scarabs, Gilded makes it so it cannot spawn a trove. It can only spawn a spire or a boss. This is important because spires are where the majority of the mobs spawn at the very end. I'll talk more about the spires in a second. But basically, troves are bad, spires are good. Now, the other cool part about this is bosses only spawn in 78 plus maps. So you guys may have noticed I'm running T7 cemeteries. He may have been like, wow, his character must suck. He's running T7 cemeteries. Why is he doing that? He should be running altars. Now, this is the core part of the strategy, actually. By running the lower maps, we actually make the maps easier. So we clear them faster. But we also eliminate the bosses from the spires. So we only get spires as an option. We eliminated the troves, and now we eliminate the bosses. This means we only get spires. So why are spires so important? Why are we going through such lengths to get the spires? This is a really cool part about the strategy. Spires are insane. So they spawn monsters by shooting out a projectile. And this projectile spawns rare mobs. But if you increase the amount of projectiles the mob has, it'll spawn more monsters based on how many projectiles you add. So for example, we roll plus two proj on the map. And that gets increased to plus three from our atlas. We're getting three times more monsters, basically, than we would have otherwise had. There's actually even more ways to scale that. This league, they added purple, blue, and yellow juice. Now, the purple juice has a downside. It gives monsters additional proj, based on how much purple juice you get. So if we get a lot of purple juice, not only does it give a ton of rarity, but it also gives a ton of projectiles. And this is spawning way more monsters than normal. I'm not sure like if this is intended, but this is how Abyss has worked for years, so I'm sure GGG knows about this. But it's just kind of crazy interaction with the lead mechanic. Um, this is where the majority of my loot is coming from. As a general thing, we only really care about rare monsters. That seems to be where most of the loot is coming from in general with the lead mechanic. This is because rare monsters have conversion mechanics where all their drops can be converted into different various things, like for example, currency. Scarabs, Uniques, things like that. So my general strategy for the lead mechanic is to get as much purple juice as possible, as well as yellow juice. Now, blue juice is good as well. Like, the best case scenario, you get all three of them a little bit. Like, mostly purple, some yellow and blue as well. But if you only can get two, I think purple and yellow are the play. This might confuse some people, because blue is the currency one. But actually, ironically enough, the best currency drops you get are usually from purple and yellow. This is because the monster drops a ton of uniques, which then get converted into currency by the conversion mechanic. That randomly happens sometimes. And that's where you see like the 30 to like 100 divine drops randomly happen. That's like the conversion mechanic we're talking about here. This also sometimes becomes like 100 scarabs, like this bajillion unique items can drop. Stuff like that. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for as many rare monsters as possible. This means the best map mods are actually rare monsters and plus proj. So I don't really care about quantity on the map too much. I'm mostly looking for those two mods. But yeah, basically anything that adds rare monsters is good. So I'll quickly talk about the sextants and scarabs. I've been asked a ton of questions about this. 
Um, the main things that matter are Abyss and the Relic Party Scarabs. Past that, it doesn't really matter too much. I generally run like Harbinger or like Div Card Scarabs or like Breach Scarabs, like Legion Scarabs. But the main two are the Unique Items and the Abyss. Now, you pretty much always want to have some sort of Delirium, like either the Orb or a Sextant, as well as Beyond. Pretty much always run Beyond Sextant. Beyond is just insane. I generally would recommend to have the Never Spawn a boss, but this league, the bosses drop a ton of loot. So it's actually like, it's way too much fun to have a boss spawn and it drop like 2,000 unique items than it is to like not have Beyond the entire map, right? So generally, I don't take that keystone anymore. I like to see the Beyond boss spawn and have like triple empowered. It drops so much loot, it's crazy fun. Would recommend it. Uh, so for the Sextants, make sure you have Beyond. Past that, it's just basically Beyond and Abyss, and the other two don't really matter as much. Like I said before, you can do like Breach, you can do Legion, you can do Strong Boxes, you can do Harbinger, pretty much whatever you prefer, as long as you have the Abyss and the Unique Curve. And the Atlas strategy. I'm going to go ahead and post the PUB below with my character and my Atlas as well. You guys take a look at that. I'll go over it quickly though and mention the important notes. So we're going Wandering Path. This makes it so notables don't do anything at all, but it doubles the small nodes, which is really important for mapping. Now we're taking all the strong box nodes. These are kind of whatever. The most important thing is all the abyss nodes. The abyss nodes are the core key part of this strategy, getting every abyss node possible for all the increased chance for monsters. This is very important and the core part of the strategy, as we mentioned earlier. Getting all the beyond stuff, more beyond drops. We're not taking the beyond keystone. Normally you would, so beyond doesn't stop spawning. Like I said, it's really fun to kill a Beyond boss and spawn and just drop like a thousand unique items. So I'm taking the Speaker of the Dead. This is for my character specifically. Pathfinders don't like ghosts. Some ghosts can remove all your flask, and this stops it from happening. That's why we're taking that. I'm taking 7th Gate as well. This allows you to basically craft whatever you want in the map device, like in our case, Abyss, for example. Take off one. If we take out a 7th Gate, we can no longer. Craft Abyss, and Abyss is what I'm currently doing, so I like 7th Gate. And Singular Focus. This isn't like crazy important, I don't think, but basically any non cemetery that drops will become currency. It gives you more currency. We don't really care about maps that aren't cemetery, especially for T7s, so it's nice. Currently running Perma Delirium, so if I have Delirium Sextant, it just never goes away. Now, this is uh, basically a Delirium Orb. So if you want to run Delirium Orb instead, you can drop the Delirium Chance and the Endless Delirium Keystone and run something else. Like, for example, maybe Alva or something like that. Whatever you want. It's not like a huge deal either way. Alva's probably worth running. And yeah, that's pretty much the general strategy. One important thing to mention is these increased effect of modifiers is actually how we go from 2 proj to 3 proj. These getting doubled from Wandering Path is really important for that. And it's another core reason that Wandering Path is so good. That is the key strat. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like content like this, make sure you like and subscribe and comment below. And yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy MFing and I'll see you guys next time.